here alone. Concealed in the parchments he had allegedly found were a number of clues, and these clues started us off on a completely new trail. While Andrews checked for historical accuracy, Schellenberger tried to make sense of the parchments with their secret codes and occult geometry. Well, I started with the work that Henry Lincoln had done, uh, but only took it a certain distance. And I then noticed that there was an angle between two of the lines, which was 60 degrees. This suggests the equilateral triangle. And I found the left-hand line, which actually runs at 75 degrees to the horizontal, passes between a whole series of O's. In the second parchment, he detected a tilted square and began to wonder if they were opposite sides of the same page. Paul's next move was to place the parchments onto transparency with his overlays and show them back to back. There appeared to be a precise geometric relationship between the triangle and the square on Saunier's parchments. The more we've investigated the, the story and the more discoveries we've made, the, the more of the Sonia story we, we feel inclined to believe. The story goes that soon after he found the parchments, Sonia took them to Paris to be examined by experts. The trip that Sonia made to Paris also took him to the Louvre, where he is said to have obtained copies of the three paintings. He's reported to have returned to Rennes le Chateau with a copy of Poussin's Les Bergers d'Arcadie, a, a painting by David Tenier the Younger, and a portrait of Pope Celestine V. The reasons one is looking at the, this particular painting by Poussin is that the coded message, the riddle, refers to Poussin and the other painter, Tenier. The triangle, the equilateral triangle in parchment one, is tilted over at a strange angle of 75 degrees to the horizontal. The shepherd on the extreme left of the painting is holding his staff at exactly that angle. That is the first indication that the geometry that you find in the Poussin painting is the same as in the parchments and the same geometry appeared to be present in all three paintings. Schellenberger began to study maps of the region. It occurred to him that the coded message might be indicating points on the landscape. It's intelligible, but it's still apparently meaningless. The translation that's normally given is um, shepherdess no temptation, Poussin and Tenier guard the key, peace, 681, by the cross and this horse of God, I complete, this uh, demon guardian, at midday, blue apples. The whole of this riddle uh, describes particular geographic locations, and when you go round it, you get a square. A perfect square, just like the square on the parchment and in the paintings, and tilted at 75 degrees. To test his theory on the ground, Andrews and Schellenberger went to France. They located the shepherdess of the riddle at a strange rock formation known as the Devil's Armchair. Well, the, uh, the most obvious translation for this, of course, is shepherdess, which is what it's always been translated as. But there are other meanings for berger, and the relevant one is armchair, and it's a term which is still used in the antique trade. The riddle also contained the enigmatic numbers 681. 681 is actually a spot height on the map at a place called Col de las Pinas. Uh, the intriguing thing about this is there's a very nice sign saying Col de las Pinas, 680. But 19th century maps give the height as 681. Well, we found the cross by the side of the railway line. But the really interesting thing about the cross is that it has uh, dates on it. One is 1876. The other year 
is 1801. When you subtract one from another, one is left with the number 75. 75 degrees uh, is the angle which is found in the parchments and in the paintings. A cheval de dieu. Cheval de dieu is the railway or the railway line which is linked to the cross. The obvious translation is a horse of God and in fact Cheval de Dieu, if you look that up in the Grande La Russe dictionary of the 19th century edition, you find that it's actually a slang phrase or a argo, as the French would put it, for a cricket, grillon in French. If you look that up it doesn't just mean cricket, it's uh, actually the square support for something like a railway bridge. A chance encounter with a local peasant taught them that bon bleu, or blue apples, is local slang for grapes. We've now arrived in Esperanza Church. The final part of the coded message tells us a midi bon bleu. And in the context of our story, the bunch of grapes represents the body of Christ. And the wine from the crushed grapes is what represents the blood of Christ in the Mass. And our midi in this particular context means to the ancient meridian, the rose line. A straight line drawn from the church to the meridian passes through a mountain called Cardu. Andrews and Schellenberger are the first to identify this site. But if something is concealed here, who could have put it there? Well, one answer would seem to be some sort of secret society or order. And this thought leads to another fascinating possible trail. Many secret orders claim some descent from or connection with the Knights Templar, a religious military order founded by a group of French knights in 1119. The story of the Templars goes back 900 years to the time of the Crusades and the conquest of Jerusalem. Here, Lincoln believed they found something precious, possibly of great religious value. According to Lincoln, the Templars must have spirited this treasure away and concealed it somewhere in France before they were driven from the Holy Land after their bloody defeat at the hands of the Saracens. It's said that the secret of the Templars almost died with them when the order was violently suppressed by King Philip IV of France in 1307. At dawn on Friday the 13th of October 1307, the Templars throughout France were arrested. Although Philippe's objective of total surprise seems to have been achieved, his prime target, the Order's wealth, was never found, and what became of the Templars' treasure has remained a mystery. In France, the Templars were tried, and many were put to the torture. But a handful of Templars are thought to have escaped to this part of France, where initiates preserved the secret through the centuries. Among them were the Counts of Blanchefort, whose castle stands in rennes le chateau The whole thing about this story is that there is a lot of complementary evidence to support it. And direct support for this is, is obtained from the gravestones which were in the graveyard at rennes le chateau This is where the priest Saunière disturbed the grave of the Lady Haute Poule, Countess of Blanchefort. Schellenberger has detected two clues on her gravestone. First, a line drawn between the two crosses bisects the arrow in the middle at 60 degrees. Second, the arrow itself divides the motto, I too in Arc Adia. Could the motto be indicating the chateau at Arc? 
When they got there, they found that a bearing of 60 degrees, taken from the chateau, passes straight through the rock pinnacle on the mountain of Kaudu. Bearing should be 240 to true north. The point of the geometry is to indicate this precise location on the side of Kaudu mountain. Spot on, we've got 242 magnetic, minus 2 degrees magnetic deviation, we're right on. Geometry is concealed because this obviously is a secret of great importance and it is not a secret to be revealed to the uninitiated. Many people have been trying to work out what all these clues actually mean. They've been trying to find a secret location, a treasure, whatever might be there. But we have finally done this and we're absolutely sure that this is the right place. We have three separate sources of information which mark the precise location as being at the base of those rocks. Now, Sonia was probably the first person to stumble on this secret for a very long time. When Sonia understood what was hidden in the mountain, he tried to destroy the evidence on the tombstone. The story is that Sonia, having realized the significance of these stones, actually then defaced them and he either struck off the inscription or he smashed them up. Sonia smashed the tombstone to preserve the supposed secret of the Templars. And this was the secret. Christ did not die on the cross or rise from the dead. Instead, the Templars removed his body from the Holy Land and concealed it somewhere near Rennes-le-Chateau. This is what Andrews and Schellenberger believe and that is why they have called their book The Tomb of God. Time Watch set out to check the basic facts of that story. Well, Sonier holds great significance in our story. Um, his hand has touched the major evidence which indicate the location. The parchments which give the geometry which leads to the location. The grey stones, the coded message of course which comes in through the parchments and even more significantly the geometry we discovered in the paintings. Um, what's the hard evidence that he obtained the th three paintings in Paris? There is no hard evidence that he obtained the three paintings. Uh, this is a factor that was written up in a book that came out in the 1980s. There should be records in the Louvre to show that these paintings are ordered in the 1890s. Well, possibly. I don't know how good the records are in the Louvre, but we haven't investigated that. In fact, the Louvre does keep records of reproductions it has sold, and these show that the museum sold no copies of the Poussin until 1901, ten years too late. What's the hard evidence that he went to Paris? There is no hard evidence that he went to Paris, apart from the, the recent discovery in 1994 that he celebrated Mass for five days in Paris in March of 1892. Where's that recorded? That apparently is recorded in the Register of Masses at Saint-Sulpice in Paris. Have you checked that? We have not checked that. In fact, there's no evidence that Saunier ever visited Saint-Sulpice or celebrated Mass there, according to a letter from the seminary's archivist. Yet Saunier's trip to Paris is what ties him to the all-important painting by Poussin. What's more, most art historians reject the whole idea of occult geometry in Poussin's paintings. Is there any evidence that Poussin or his contemporaries actually used mathematics or geometry to compose their painting? Yeah, if we look at a picture like um, the Arcadian Shepherds by Poussin, it's easy to find what you're looking for in terms of geometry. I think the really important point from the standpoint of a historian like myself is that we have hundreds and hundreds of drawings by Poussin, ten, thousands and thousands including his contemporaries. Now, not in